reduce it randomized over 8,000 patients with elevated triglycerides. By that, I actually mean a range of 135 to 500 milligrams per deciliter to either icosapent ethyl, four grams a day, or to placebo. So icosapent ethyl is a highly purified EPA or icosapentanoic acid and it was pitted against placebo in a patient population, as I mentioned, that had elevated triglycerides and additionally had cardiovascular risk, as determined by a history of prior stable coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, or peripheral artery disease, or patients with diabetes and one additional cardiovascular risk factor, so-called diabetic primary prevention. So this mixed population was studied, followed for an average of about five years, and what we found was a 25% reduction in important cardiovascular events over that time horizon. Furthermore, we found a significant reduction, 26% reduction, in the composite of cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, and stroke, including a significant 20% reduction in death from cardiovascular causes. This is a very exciting study. Uh, it's the first time that They've addressed a patient population who have hypertriglyceridemia and well-controlled levels of LDL who are also on a statin. There have been very few drugs that have succeeded in reducing cardiac events added on top of a statin, particularly well-controlled LDL cholesterols. So now they're using a drug, an omega-3 fatty acid, specifically EPA, which is different than other combination type drugs, and the results are just amazing. It lowers risk of Cardiovascular events, it lowers risk of cardiac death, it lowers risk of all-cause death. It has a very small signal of a slight increased risk of atrial fibrillation and bleeding. That's overwhelmed by the benefit. If you treat about 30 patients with this compound, two grams twice a day, uh, you will prevent either an MI, death, or stroke. That's an amazing statistic. So big trial, good follow-up, very positive. Reduce it, I mean it was epic results, but as a clinician I want to know which one of my patients should I consider putting on the EPA or the purified EPA based on this trial. And there were, looks like there were five main groups that got the most bang for the buck. The first was those that had triglycerides over 150, those that were younger age, so those who were under 65, those who were secondary prevention. So the group that already had cardiovascular disease uh, compared to the people that had uh, diabetes and risk factors. They, so the cardiovascular disease did better. Those that were not taking azetamide. And finally, those that were on moderate or high intensity statin already. So when I think about the reduced trial, when I'm in my clinic next week, I'm going to be looking for my patients that have cardiovascular disease and those other characteristics as potential candidates for the purified EPA. So this is for the patient of which there's a huge variety. Very telling, the BMI in this group was 30.8. So we're talking chunky individuals, right? And these were, a lot of them were diabetic. So we're talking this dysmetabolic patient who manifests with elevated levels of triglycerides in spite of statins. And we've been sort of leaving them alone. And there have been other studies that have been done uh, using fish oil, a lot of them using low dose fish oil, as well as using fibrates. And they've shown no beneficial results. So I think that the buzzwords here are the right patient on the right drug in the right dose. The question is, you know, how, uh, how is this fish oil, uh, the purified EPA doing this? And there are three possibilities that were presented in the paper. The first is an antithrombotic effect. There was a slight increase in bleeding in the individuals that were on the uh, EPA, purified EPA tablets. So there may be an antithrombotic effect. However, it didn't happen. The benefits, the curves didn't separate straight away. It took time. So they don't believe that's the only thing, that perhaps there is a plaque stabilization uh, effect or a membrane effect. And then finally, the medications do have some antioxidant properties as well as anti-inflammatory properties, and they noted reduced levels of CRP in the group. So I think it's probably a multifactorial effect. Uh, and also finally, you know, people that are in studies like this tend to be more motivated, and so they tend to also have healthier lifestyles, you know, than people that are not in studies. So I think there's probably a broad range of things. 
Um, but uh, the, the big question I think that moving forward from this is, what about people that already have say two or more fish meals per week? Uh, do they, uh, are they getting enough of the, uh, the beneficial substances already or do they also need to take EPA? And that was something that wasn't addressed in the study because you know we've always believed that natural sources of a lot of these substances is a better, uh, gives a better effect than artificial uh, concentrated sources. Not all fish oil compounds are created equal. The regulations surrounding their contents varies a lot. Uh, so I hope that as a result of Reduce It, that we will see uh, prescription labeling, guaranteed content. You know, this is, a, this is a fairly high dose. This is two grams twice a day of EPA. That's twice as much as uh, most of us have been using. And that may explain the benefit. It shows high-risk patients. 70% had a prior cardiovascular event. The rest were diabetic. They had high triglycerides. They were already on statins. So high-risk group high dose therapy, specific therapy, EPA, has benefit. So overall, I think this will be viewed as a major advance in cardiovascular prevention, perhaps akin to when statins first came on the scene and were shown to reduce cardiovascular risk. Should everybody be on this drug? I'm not sure, maybe. But certainly the patient population I just described, I can't see why you wouldn't want to do it.